Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making easy and amazing apple turnovers. So let's get started. First off, set your oven to 400 degrees and you want two sheets of puff pastry thawed and ready to use. If you want to make your own puff pastry, you can click up here for my puff pastry recipe. For these apple turnovers, you want about four medium apples because you need two cups of diced apples for the filling. You can use any apples you'd like. I'm using Honeycrisp today, but Granny Smith, Braeburn, Cortland, they all work. These bake up very quickly and you don't have to worry about like the perfect consistency like you do for pies. This recipe comes together so quickly and you get that instant gratification of like basically a delicious handheld apple pie but without any of the work. <laughs> it's so easy. All right. Now we're gonna cut the flesh from the core. My mom used to call me a squirrel because I would like <laughs> eat apples until they were like just like a little string with seeds connected to them. So these are gonna be snacked on later. All right. Now we're gonna dice our apples. You want your apple pieces to be about a quarter of an inch thick. They should be small and fairly uniform. That way, they're all baked through by the time these turnovers are done. They have like almost no cook time in the oven, so you just can't have giant chunks of apple. Do a quick check and see how close you are to that two cup measurement. Just about there, plus a little extra for snacking. Grab a large skillet and about a tablespoon of butter. We're gonna melt this over medium heat and then make some delicious apple magic happen. And in the meantime, I'm just unpacking my puff pastry so I can be sure it's all happy and everything's gonna be hunky-dory. Okay, perfect. One and two. Now, onto the burner. We're gonna place this over a medium heat, get it nice and melty, then dump the apples out. Slice a lemon and have it ready. Grab your cinnamon, any other spices you want, and some cornstarch too. The cornstarch is optional, but it'll really help your filling set up nicely. My butter is melted. We're gonna add the apples right in. Mix those apples up so they're all nicely coated. I'm gonna cook this for a few minutes while stirring frequently so the apples start to soften and release a lot of their delicious juice. If you wanna make this recipe with little ones, start off with the filling already made and slightly cooled, then they can assemble the turnovers, you pop them in the oven, they drizzle the icing on top and enjoy. It'll be really fun and delicious. This is the hot stove part though. All right, my apples have started to soften up. I'm gonna add I'm gonna add one pinch of salt, a good squeeze of lemon, about a tablespoon. Now I'm sprinkling in my half teaspoon of cinnamon. If you wanted to add other spices like allspice, cardamom, nutmeg, I would do a quarter teaspoon max of each. One quarter cup of packed brown sugar. Whoop. Now we're gonna mix it all up and these apples should soften nicely. It'll be about five minutes of cook time, maybe less if you're on a crazy burner like this stove has. Ooh, they look so good and it smells amazing. This, by the way, is excellent on vanilla ice cream as well. I'm just putting it out there. Like if you're like, oh, I love apples. I don't love puff pastry for some reason. Just make it like this on top of it. Oh, ice cream, so good. You can see right now the apples are releasing their juices as they soften and those juices are reducing. You don't wanna have a ton of water inside of your puff pastry. So getting rid of this is key. It also concentrates the flavor. So today I'm using store-bought puff pastry. It is the most convenient thing ever and a real time saver. But don't be intimidated by homemade puff pastry. It's really easy. That video is on the channel and it is so satisfying to see something you made puff up and be really beautiful and delicious. If you're vegan, however, store-bought puff pastry is often vegan. Depending on your stove, you might have like a big pool of apple juices here or they might have been basically all cooked off. Like this, not very juicy because the stove is evaporating things. It's going so hot. If there's a lot of juice, I'd add up to a teaspoon of cornstarch. Just sprinkle it in like sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. You'd mix over low heat until the juice is thickened up. This looks great though. So it's off heat and it can start cooling down. This is too hot for our puff pastry. It would melt it and be very messy. So we need to cool it down in the fridge. Pop it into a bowl and while it chills out, we can roll our puff pastry out. Spread out because more surface area means it'll cool down quicker. In you go. 
After I unfolded my pastry dough, I placed it onto a sheet of parchment paper because it will stick to your counter, be forewarned. This needs to get rolled out on a lightly floured surface, and you wanna end up with a 12 by 12 inch square. A Little bit more flour. Just roll it out, keep that square shape. I love having like a target for where I need to roll. Another reason a pastry mat's so good. If you need to, you can square the edges off. I love using a pizza cutter to cut pastry. So easy. We're gonna divide each of these into four equal squares that are six inches. As you cut them, you're gonna lay them onto your baking sheets lined with parchment paper. Repeat the process with the other sheet, and I will point out, if you're leaving these guys on the counter for a bit, you should always keep them covered because they will dry out and start cracking. In fact, those are staying nice and covered. It's very annoying when it cracks. These turnovers would split right open and leak if we don't seal them properly. So grab an egg, we're gonna crack that into a bowl and you can add a tablespoon of water, milk, or cream. I'm using cream today. Give it a quick mix. Now it's time to start assembling. Move over. You want to assemble on the baking sheet itself. Not fun to transfer these guys around. Our turnovers are gonna get folded diagonally. We're gonna add a few tablespoons of filling to one side of that diagonal fold. You wanna leave about a half inch border around, and I will say people will feel cheated if there's not enough filling in these. So it's a delicate line between overfilling and they explode, and underfilling and it's just puff pastry. And I did not use a measuring tape, so I think these guys are a little bit more rectangular than square. Don't judge me. <laughs> That just means I have to do a final trim after the fold. Grab some of your egg wash. You're gonna brush that along the edge. This is the glue that seals everything together. I like to work in batches of two. If you go and do a huge assembly line, you'll find things are drying out, things are cracking, they're not sticking. It's a mess. I'm gonna fold this over. You can stretch the dough a little bit if it's not lining up just right. Press it down nicely. We're gonna repeat for the second one. I always think of turnovers as an American dessert, but they are French, and I don't believe the story around it involves like apples and butter and flour being distributed during an epidemic. And this was like a form of medicine. It's like, I don't know. If you know the real answer, you can let me know what the exact origin of the apple turnover is. But in the meantime, I'm using a fork and crimping the edge over. It gives it a nice finished look and it really helps hold it together. Just remember, you don't want an edge that's super thick because that's all puff pastry. You want delicious apple flavor in every bite. There we go. In fact, if there's too much, you can just square it off a little bit. And repeat. And you can see right now, they're kind of stuck onto the paper. That's why we want to assemble them in place. Now grab two more because each baking sheet holds four and you'll repeat the process. You can see I'm arranging it into like a flat triangular shape. You also wanna crimp the edge because puff pastry will puff up so high, it's almost unmanageable. So this helps keep it tamped down. These guys are gonna go in right after a quick egg wash. Brushing with egg wash will give them a beautiful golden glossy finish and it's gonna let me sprinkle some sugar on top for a crunchy, sparkly, sweet finish. This is optional, but you can add sanding or granulated sugar right on top. I love the sweetness of it because the puff pastry itself has no sugar. I'm using a sharp knife to score the top. It lets steam escape. I might see some of the filling bubble out and it looks pretty to boot. These guys are ready to go into the oven 400 degrees for 18 to 20 minutes or until they're golden, puffed, and amazing. In the meantime, we're gonna make some icing. While our turnovers are baking, we're making a super easy icing with three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar. Here you have a choice. You could use two tablespoons of water, mix it up and call it a day, or you could add in some lemon juice, some vanilla. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna do a combination of vanilla and lemon juice because they are my favorites. I'm just eyeballing it. If it's a little thin, I can add some more powdered sugar. If it's too thick, I'll add more liquid. Mix that up. You just wanna see a nice drizzling consistency. 
That looks nice to me. I'm gonna cover these up so it can get drizzled as soon as they're out of the oven. If you leave this uncovered, it will dry out. My turnovers are out of the oven. They cooled down just a little bit so they're not screaming hot anymore, and it's time to drizzle them liberally with the icing. You can use a spoon or a piping bag. They both work. It's totally up to you. Rake that icing all over the top. It can be totally messy. It does not have to look perfect or anything. And by the way, these smell so good. It's like mind-blowing. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. The flaky crust topped with that drizzle and filled with all those amazing apples. They're perfectly sweet with the brown sugar and cinnamon throughout. Oh my gosh. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe. And if you like this video, check out my Apple playlist.